Now we're going to talk a little bit about Miroslav Philharmonic, which is a soft synth that we make. It means it's like a keyboard inside your computer that allows you to play sounds, in this case orchestral and string sounds, choirs, uh, just like you'd have a real keyboard hooked up to your computer. So let's have a look at it real quick. And So this is Miroslav Philharmonic. Now, there are several things about Miroslav Philharmonic that you need to know. First of all, it's extremely easy to use. Really, really easy to use. So uh, our, our like, line for IK Multimedia is musicians first. IK Multimedia, musicians first. And that means that basically everything is just as simple as possible to use and fun to use as well. So for in this case, you've got everything right there laid out in front of you. There's no tricky menus. There's not a whole lot of stuff to go into. So it just lets you get creative and lets you get as deep into the program as you can, as you want to, but without interfering with the creative process, without having to be looking through tons and tons of manuals trying to figure out what things are, and flipping through a bunch of menus and screens trying to get to one little thing. It's all right there in front of you. So with your parts, you've got 16 part, 16 part multi timbre So you've got parts 1 through 8 and 9 through 16. So you've got 16 parts multi timbre 256 notes of polyphony. All right, that's a lot of polyphony. That's like double what any keyboard on the market has. Basically. Most keyboards are 128 notes of polyphony. This is 256 notes of polyphony. Now what's cool with this is you can actually change your polyphony right here. There's a polyphony button or slider. And you can change. So if you're doing like a percussion sound and you're only using like a tambourine, you really only need to have a couple of notes going at the same time. So you would just put that tambourine part down to polyphony of like five. That way it's not eating into your other sounds. So you're never having to worry about running out of polyphony, having notes cut into each other. All right? And you can also change your MIDI channels really easily. You can change 1 through 16, your MIDI channels for the different parts. Now the sound we've got set up here is a uh, ensemble called a full mass. And they're all set to MIDI channel 1. All right? Now what that allows me to do is I play one note, and it's playing. all these different sounds, which allows me to create big, lush, orchestral sounds. That's just me playing it right there on the fly, just kind of making something up. But you can get a really cool, big sound out of it just from sitting there playing it. Now, these parts here, all these different parts, the way to get to these parts is over here in the instrument section. Now, in the instrument section, you've got all your instruments set up into different sections of the orchestra. So you've got brass, choirs, elements, which is uh, pieces of instruments and kind of different sounds that you find in an orchestral hall. Then you've got orchestral sections, other instruments, percussion, strings, and woodwinds. Now if you click on these, if you go down further, I'm going to take this out here. If you go down here into these sections here, like brass for example, you've got ensemble brass and solo brass. You go in further and you've got French horns, trombones, trumpets, and then if you were going to like trombones, for example, you have all these different uh, trombone sounds with the articulations. You've got fortissimo, you've got mute, portato, you've got staccato, mute, and then you've got staccato. Now with these different sections here, now these are the ensemble brass. These are not even the solo brass. If you want to get into solo brass, you come down here to your solo sections and you go to your trombone. Go down to solo trombone or solo bass trombone, and you've got more sounds down here as well. Forte, mute, portato, staccato one, staccato two. So that's how it's basically broken up. It's broken up into broad sections and then individual instruments. All right. One of the uh, my favorite parts 
One of my favorite sounds in here is the um, solo violin. The solo instruments in here are just amazing. And you can see there's a lot of variations on the violin sound. <laughs> So you can hear the sound kind of growing over time, and you can hear the uh, musicality that's in the sound. All right, so it was recorded by Miroslav Vitas, and Miroslav Vitas is a musician. First and foremost, he's a musician. So he was going for clean sound, beautiful sound, but also a great expressiveness to the sound. And that's what Miroslav Philharmonic is so famous for. It's the expressiveness of the instruments that are in here. So if you listen to the violin, you can hear it developing and then it ends it's a very beautiful expressive sound so it makes it very easy to just sit down and play it and get a wonderful tone out of it now I'm going to show you one of the strings from the string sections we go to orchestral sections and you go to uh, full strings we'll go to full strings over here full strings very nice and lush sound. These are really beautiful sounds. If you're looking for strings, that can't go wrong with this. All right. So that's the different instruments, and then we've got the parts that we talked about before: 16-part multi-tonality. Now. So uh, let's go ahead and bring out, let's put some strings here, and then we're going to put a, uh, some other instruments. Let's put a piano. Put a piano on instrument two. And then we'll put a, uh, let's put some percussion in here as well, some general, general percussion. I'm going to put all these on so I can solo them out. So strings. Yeah, the piano is even a nice piano sound. So if you don't have a piano and you need a piano as well, some more percussion. You can use this. And then we've got our percussion down here. So if I want to go in here and play with these sounds, so let's say, for example, I want my percussion to sound like they're really far back in the hall. Well, you've got your effects section over here on the right that allows you to add four effects to every sound. Okay, so you've got your, you've got 20 different effects to choose from. And one of the effects that's in here that I absolutely love is the CS Reverb. Now, CS Reverb is based on our CSR, which is Classic Studio Reverb. Classic Studio Reverb is modeling the Lexicon series of reverbs. It's a really, really nice studio reverb sound. And take that CS reverb and you can throw it on here and then you can see your dry wet section down here. So I can change how much it's going. And then if I want to take my piano, and let's say I wanted to get really crazy with my piano and I want to put a chorus on my piano. Now you probably wouldn't put like a chorus on your classical piano, but you know why not? We're just gonna pass it on here. So I've got my my piano with chorus on it, but then I've still got my reverb over here on my on my percussion. So I've got two different effects going on here at the same time. And then if I want to go down here to my strings, and let's say let's put some uh, let's put like a little delay on them. Oops. So, so I've got these different effects on here. Now I can put up to four different effects per instrument. And I can go in here and just completely create any kind of sounds that I want to do with it. So you're not really limited. It's all right there and it seems pretty easy, pretty straightforward on how to do it. 